All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. What a wonderful morning it is when the people of God can gather together in freedom and in truth to, to sing and to pray and to worship, to listen to God's word and to, to share uh, in the activities that are uh, in the life of this congregation, particularly this Sunday. Our particular emphasis is on the mission youth work um, completed seven days ago. Um, they're all rested up, and now they're ready to lead in worship. Uh, so we're thankful for that. Uh, we're glad that you're back. I enjoyed looking at the pictures. I haven't seen all the pictures on Facebook. Uh, you can tag me if you want me to see things, or not tag me if you don't want me to see some. There are, oh, and our uh, advisors sitting up here, uh, in the front, um, thank you all so much for uh, the time that you spend and the, the work that you do, um, assisting uh, the youth uh, in our church in their Christian growth. We appreciate that very much. I think I'll lead off this morning by one of the favorite uh, things that uh, may happen here in, in church life, an ice cream social, uh, not ours, which will come later after uh, Vacation Bible School, but uh, one um, sponsored by the, the church next door on uh, Saturday the 15th from 5 to 7. So uh, after the work day is over here at the church, you can drift on next door for some for some ice cream, and there's a whole bunch of other things. There's a whole menu, and I'm going to post that uh, outside my office door. Uh, also, um, we have to unpack the bulletin today. We've got, um, we've got a reminder about the Memorial Fund, which is uh, in here. We've received 19 commitments uh, so far that are, were identifiable. Uh, that is with your name on it. And... Um, we're in the middle of our 100 by 100 restroom makeover fundraising project, so please read that single sheet and, and participate uh, as you are able. Our goal is 100 of our giving families to uh, contribute $100 apiece so that we can uh, update um, the women's bathroom on the first floor, which, uh, as many of you know, has uh, uh, been under repair for the last two years, I think, uh, replacing various items and fixing various leaks, and after a long time finally getting a dripping faucet to where it wasn't dripping anymore. I don't know what they finally did to accomplish that, but it's not dripping, I don't think. I haven't been in there in a while. Uh, also, um, we have an insert uh, from our uh, Presbytery of Miami Valley. Uh, meet our new moderator and vice moderator. Uh, Gidget Collins is an elder at the Bath Presbyterian Church, which is a congregation on the other side of Dayton, out in the, out in the country. And uh, she will be, uh, in her role as moderator of the presbytery, she'll be visiting with uh, our session uh, at its August meeting. Her goal during her time as moderator, which is one year, is to visit with all the Presbyterian church sessions uh, or all the churches uh, in the course of that year. And she's well underway and will, will be here at our, at our church uh, at the August session meeting. Then we have our uh, regular announcements uh, and a, a great picture of the, the Youth Fellowship on Mission uh, and various other items. Uh, I do want to... Um, to uh, <clears throat> update a few or add a few prayer um, concerns. Uh, Troy Heron spent um, some of the last week uh, over in Indianapolis in the hospital uh, with some blood issues. Uh, remember, he's awaiting a transplant, and uh, 
just as he uh, returned home on Thursday, uh, his mother um, passed away, uh, and the service uh, will be Monday in Fountain City, Indiana. So please remember uh, Troy and the rest of the family uh, in your prayers. Uh, we also got word midweek uh, that Doris Barker uh, is in Reed Hospital, and she got some cellulitis in her arm and uh, was very painful, and she's had some other issues arise while she's been in the hospital. So she's at Reed Hospital still. Uh, yesterday was not a good day but, uh, for her, but uh, please keep uh, Doris uh, in your prayers uh, in the week ahead. And then I received a text this morning from uh, Linda Daly, who is uh, on vacation in Florida, and her sister uh, Nancy uh, Grassman uh, is having emergency surgery to treat a side effect of her cancer treatment fluid on the lung. So, so please remember Linda and Nancy and the rest of her family uh, in your prayers uh, also. Are there others that we would bring before one another this morning? Yes. Yeah, if you just Thank you. Was there somebody else with a hand up back here? Let us pause for a moment of special prayer. Gracious God, as we gather week by week as a community of faith, we become aware of the larger family of which we are a part. So we pray this morning for those in our own congregation who have some particular need today. May anxiety and stress uh, melt away. Uh, may the comfort uh, that you promise in Christ, be present to that to those who, who have that need. We ask your healing touch uh, with uh, Troy as he awaits his transplant and Doris as she um, convalesces in the hospital. Um, we pray for Gary this morning in his rehabilitation. In our wider family, we know of people whose lives touch ours and who's, with whom we share life and love in a variety of different ways. And so we ask that you be with all of those um, who have some particular need today, that they might be strengthened in faith, assured with the peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, Feel the power of the Spirit moving within them. So God, bless all those whom we have named and, and those whose needs we do not know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us worship God. Are we singing an intro? Hmm? No? Okay. Let's sing an intro.
May we attend together to our call to worship. It was confusing and astonishing. Tongues of fire that didn't burn but brought to life. Bewildering and amazing. No words can contain the power of the Spirit who is still alive today. Filling us with joy. Our hymn is number 229, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, watch over us and beckon us to follow the right path. We get stuck, stopped by our fear of trying something new, trapped by our memories of past failures, caught in the web of conflicting choices, halted by the clamor of many voices. We know that the stress of worry and the blur of tears, like staring at an empty page, we feel trapped and hesitant. Free us, O oh God, to follow with joyful steps, to hear your clearly your description, to hold on our loving, and courageous in our caring, and brave in our speaking, through our Lord Jesus. Amen. Happy are those who hear the word of God, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patient endurance. Whatever.
Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Christ our sins are forgiven. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Please turn to one another and exchange a sign of the peace of Christ. I'd like to invite our boys and girls to come forward, please. this river and that the water had made a, a path through the mountain and carved these huge huge rocks down so that it could travel over okay and, and we noticed as we were going over it how could this happen and we knew that well some of the thought was that the mighty God the everlasting God who's been here forever because he had all that time used his power of the water to carve this out. And so I have something here in my bowl. I have some rocks. And I have one rock I want you to look at.
Oh, thank you very much. So it's from Alcina. Um, it probably was from a river initially, but um, we just wanted you to have it. Can you get it to the printer, please? Good morning. Oh, is that good? Okay. I am Lauren Ferguson. Um, this was my fifth mission trip, and this morning I'll be reading Acts 1, verse 8. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Eden and in Blue Knob and to the ends of the earth. Hi, um, I'm Brennan Fogel, and this was also my fifth mission trip, and I'm going to kind of be reflecting on the verse that Lauren just read, which is the verse that's on the back of our shirt this year, um, Acts 1-8, and we chose the verse before we left um, to Blue Knob, which was actually Altoona, Pennsylvania, that was where we worked, um, and we chose it to like comfort us and to inspire us to go on the mission trip, and it talks about how the Holy Spirit is with us and gives us power while we're doing his work, and that was comforting and inspiring while we went on our trip and helped all the people in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Um, there was a family that we worked with that we did yard work for, and there was an elderly gentleman named Leroy that we also helped with his yard. And um, knowing that the Holy Spirit was with us, um, giving us power to do the work that he wants us to do, to be his witnesses, um, the verse, in the verse, we, uh, it just really inspired us to do the work that the Lord wants us to do. Good morning. My name is Will Kelly. Uh, this is my fourth mission trip, and I will be reading Isaiah 9, verse 6. Uh, this verse was the center focus of our mission to Blue Knob, and uh, the verse states... For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Thank you. I'm Lauren Schauer, and this was my second mission trip. Today I'm going to be reading Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 12 and 13, in connection to Wonderful Counselor. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Good morning, my name is Gideon Smith and this has been my fourth mission trip. And throughout the week, we, talk, we talked mainly about the four names of God. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And during Monday night's chapel, we talked about how God was a wonderful counselor. I believe this to be true, mainly because this is how I see him in my daily life. I see God as somebody I can go and talk to without criticism. 
And when I go on mission trips with my friends and my church family, I feel as if he consoles me when I'm stressed, of, stressed out about the work that we are doing, about what we need to get done, and that propels me to go forward and finish what we have started. Though we got a lot done on the work site, my main focus was to finish the gates on the fence. And it took us one and a half days to get four doors done, but we didn't f finish putting all the doors up, which I'm still uneasy about because people really like to steal from the homeowner because he had a major collection, collection, <laughs> of really valuable stuff in his backyard. But God has been counsel counseling me and helping me calm down to see that everything will be fine. That what we have done has shown people how God has counseled us in his teaching and how he has sent us to do his work for him. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Garrett Sanders. Uh, this was my first mission trip, and my message is Mighty God. Uh, to relate to this, I will be reading Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Good evening. My name is John Altum, and this was my second mission trip. So when we're talking about the strength that God gives us, it's not just the physical strength that we use to move a big rock or something. He also gives us emotional strength when we're in a tough spot or we're trying to do something that we don't really want to do. And he helps us to make the right decisions, even if it's the hard decision. And so his strength is a lot more than just the physical strength that we have. And so to relate that to the mission trip, I'm going to talk about the physical strength that he gave us anyway. And so while we were trying to move this, we had a post hole and there was a bunch of concrete in there. And so we were trying to get the concrete out of there to put a new post in. And so I was in, like, trying to pull the concrete out, and it was really heavy. And so as I was pulling on it, I sort of was starting to get tired, but then I got a second wind and just pulled that thing right on out of there. So I don't know if that was God helping me or if I just really actually started working and actually pulling on it. But <laughs> that's, what, that's what helped me. And so that's where his strength comes in when we're really need him and we need help, he's there for us to help us do what we need to do. So, Good morning. Uh, my name is Jenna Dittmer and this was my second mission trip and I'll be focusing on the words Everlasting Father. Um, I'll be reading Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Cooper, and this was my fourth mission trip and I will be talking about Everlasting Father. God is our Everlasting Father no matter, no matter what we do. Before anything was created, he was our Father. He is always there no matter where you are, who you are, or what you're doing. The Lord shows himself to people in many ways, sometimes during song or prayer or when you're doing something you love. He can appear in pain and heartbreak or when you're happy and full with joy. There are just so many ways, so many endless ways. We have seen so many of these ways of communication during the mission trip. At the end of every day, we would do a high, low, and a God sighting. And I think everyone here would agree when I say that our most common God sighting was through the people we got to meet and then getting to, getting to know them. You could just see God's light in them all the time. Leroy, Moses and his wife, and all of their five kids. We also saw it in each other. So I guess that you could say everything is a God sighting. I mean, God created everything in sight and everything that's ever been here on earth. 
So how could anything not be? Although the mission trip helped us highlight all of these God sightings, he is still around us, giving us signs everywhere. So never stop looking, because it's all forever, and that's why he's our everlasting father. Hello, my name is Josh Poole, and this was my sixth mission trip. And I will be reading John 14, verse 27, in relation to God being our Prince of Peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Rutherford. This was my fifth mission trip. And I'm going to talk about how we can welcome God as the Prince of Peace into our life. In this society, it's easy to worry about a lot of things that in reality don't really matter. Um, the American culture advertises ways for us to act and dress, um, causing us to become strained versions of ourselves. Um, aristocracy causes us to constantly want the highest quality of things and pressures us to have items that we don't necessarily need. On top of this, we see clashes of conflicting ideas and politics around the world on news stations. In, in reality, these battles are pretty petty and typically for egotistical ideas. While we are caught up in the latest news and social media, we neglect the most important thing of all, treasuring the peace that the Lord has given to us. However, how can we obtain peace in a world of conflicting wor with conflicting world leaders, expectations for ourselves, and the pressure society gives us to live in a certain way? As someone who is going to be an adult in a year, it's hard to find a moment of peace when I'm so pressured to worry about my future. We're so caught up in today's society and what the future might hold for us that we push away God and say that we don't have time. But we should do the exact opposite. If we made more time for God, we would experience the peace that he intended for us to have, the peace that we needed so much in times of distress. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says. Anthony, one of our camp counselors, said all week that having faith in God doesn't mean that it's going to be easier, but life will be better. This trust we put into God allows us to have someone on our side. We're lucky enough to have families and friends that are there to support us, but not everyone is that lucky. He's there for every single one of his children. None of society's expectations that we seem to have adapted matter to him. He offers this, this peace by allowing us to depend on him, and the less recognized form is the beauty that we see every day in nature. While driving through Pennsylvania, we saw the sun shining beautifully through the clouds and the endless trees covering the endless mountains. We especially saw the beauty while rafting and looking at the glistening water, the unique rocks, the waterfall, and the wildlife all around us, each deserving appreciation, each offering peace, each a creation of God. Overall, I think that the biggest thing I learned was that instead of grabbing my phone in my free time, I should take time to go outside and acknowledge the beauty that God has created for us. But the uniqueness and peace that God put into it is the biggest part that I want to focus on. We should not forget that he was given the title of Prince of Peace because it is something he offers us as his children once we put all society's expectations aside. Once we do this, our hearts can be at ease. Good morning. My name is Brady Cooper, and this is my second mission trip. I'll be reading Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 in relation to scaffolding. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go.
Hi, I'm Amy Horseman. This is my first mission trip, as you can probably tell. Um, this past week, we focused on four important names of God. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Individually, each of these names are outstanding characteristics that make up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And with these traits, we can break and build and remodel ourselves. We scaffold. Constantly, life can break us or build us. Constantly, we run into hardships, but also find our greatest hopes in life. This week was our full week of scaffolding. We sweat bullets, we wore down our bodies, scraped our skin, particularly by an evil binge, um, and bruised our veins. But from all of this hard work, we witnessed God, and he did truly strengthen our path. Through our friends and strangers, we felt him and used the strength he gave us to help others and carry on our progress for a better cause. Personally, this week is single-handedly the best week I have yet to experience. And at the very beginning, I knew only a small handful of people, and by the end of the week, I was laughing with my new family. I've never experienced a community like this. I've never experienced such hard-working friends who will fight to love and care and make this world a better place to live in. I was meant to be here this week and experience God in this light. I can quite honestly say that this is the one time I've truly felt at home and with God. This is scaffolding, you and me and God. Scaffolding will never disappear. We'll see it throughout our lives and through others because we will never stop working on ourselves. Just like our wonderful counselor who guides us, our Prince of Peace who calms us, our Everlasting Father who loves us, our Mighty God who will never stop working with us as well. Thank you all for this experience you've given me. Thank you for helping me find God in such a beautiful light. And thank you for helping me find a family this week.
in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was finished, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks and he blessed it and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord until that time when he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. body broken for you. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body.
cup of salvation. Christ's blood shed for you, for many, and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The cup of salvation. Our final hymn is 341, Blessed Assurance. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord be turning his face towards you and grant you peace now and in all the days to come. Amen.